This is the beginning of section 3.4 on page 74 of your workbook, and the topic of this section is called applied optimization. Um, this is a word for problems where we're trying to find the maximum or the minimum value of a function in an applied situation. I think the best way to illustrate this concept is just with an example. Okay, so let's take a look at the preliminary example here. Read this problem together. So a farmer with 2,400 feet of fencing wants to fence off a rectangular field that borders on a straight river. She needs no fence along the river, and they'd like to know what are the dimensions of the field that has the largest area. Okay, let's start with a picture here. So we've got a river. Okay, and we're trying to build a field kind of along the side of that river. It's in the shape of a rectangle. All right, and all we know about the shape of our field is that it's rectangular, so we don't know how long the sides are for sure. So maybe one of the sides is length x and the other is length y. And what the question is asking us is, out of all the different ways that we could build this field, what would give us the maximum grazing area? In other words, we could make this rectangle that we drew here really short and fat, or we could make it really tall and skinny depending on how we choose to distribute the fencing, and we want to know which configuration would give us the biggest area. Okay, well, just to set up the problem here, let's maybe give, give names to some of the quantities that we're interested in. So area is a part of this problem. Okay, and then the two dimensions, the length and the width, were part of the problem. Okay, so there's our setup. And in an applied problem like this, it's often a good idea to start by asking yourself, uh, what are we given and what are we trying to find? Huh. All right, so let's first think about what information that we're given that might help us to solve this problem. Okay, as you read through the original statement of the problem, 2,400 feet of fencing, that's kind of the one piece of information that stands out to me. Okay, so if you look back at our picture over here, the fencing occurs on three sides. Okay, they told us that we don't need any fence right along the river. And so um, the 2,400 feet of fencing, that's what the three lengths that we just highlighted have to add up to. So mathematically, that would be saying that x plus y plus x, the sum of those three lengths has to be 2,400. So x plus y plus x, we add up all three of those lengths, we get 2x plus y. That has to equal the 2,400 feet of fencing that we have available. Hmm. Okay, and what is it that we're trying to find? Okay, well, they would like us to find the dimensions that maximize the area. So they want to know how big would x and y be so that the area is as big as possible. Okay, well, if we want to maximize the area, we need a formula that represents the area. So that's kind of got to be our starting point. All right, so ask yourself, how do you find the area of a rectangle? That's really what we're looking at over here. Okay, kind of back up at the picture that we drew. Okay, well, area is just length times width. So the area of that rectangle should just be x times y. Mm. And we want to maximize that area. Okay, and we know how to do that. We talked about that in section 3.1. Finding a maximum of a function involves finding critical points. But that brings up a problem. Our area function has two variables in it. There's x and y. And we only know how to take the derivative of functions that have one variable in it. So how do we proceed here? Hmm. Okay, well, this is a situation that will come up a lot in these problems. And generally, what you can do is you can eliminate one of the variables if you go back and use the original given piece of information, 2x plus y equals 2,400. We can subtract 2x from both sides and rewrite that equation as y equals 
2400 minus 2x. Okay, and so since y is equal to 2400 minus 2x, we can replace the y that's down here with 2400 minus 2x. Notice that now we've got an area function that just has one variable in it, x. Okay, so we're in business. We can take the derivative of this. We can make that derivative easier to take by multiplying the x through first. So distribute the x, and a is equal to 2400x minus 2x squared. Okay, and we are ready to find critical points here. That's going to send us on our way to figuring out what the maximum area is. All right, so we'll take the derivative of a. Um, looks like all we need is the power rule. So 2400x derivative is just 2400. Derivative of minus 2x squared is minus 4x, and we're going to set that equal to 0. Hmm. Okay, and let's see. Doing the algebra there, we could add the 4x to both sides. And if we divide through by 4, it looks like x is going to be 2400 over 4. That's just going to give us 600. So we've just got one critical point in this case. Okay, now hopefully that's going to be our answer. We, we wanted to know what are the dimensions of the field so that we get the biggest area. Um, our work would seem to indicate we want to make x equal to 600 back up here on our original picture. But we should really confirm that we really do have a maximum at x equals 600. Okay, and you might remember this from section 3.1. We, we did that by making a sign chart. That was one way to just confirm that we have a maximum or a minimum. All right, so I'm going to briefly do that here. We've just got one critical point. And we're interested in the signs of the derivative. Okay, so if we follow the procedure that we talked about in section 3.1, we're going to pick some test values. So we need one number that's less than the 600, so we could maybe choose uh, 100. Okay, and test value that's bigger than 600, let's choose 700. So these are our test values. Okay, we're just interested in what is the sign of the derivative at those two numbers. Let's do those calculations over here to the left. So a prime of 100, we're going to take 100 and plug it into our derivative function, which is sitting up here. So 2400 minus 4 times 100. You can do the arithmetic there, and you're going to get 2400 minus 400. That's 2000, which is positive. So we've got a plus sign in our sign chart there. Okay, and we take our te second test value, the 700, and plug it in. This time we're going to get 2400 minus 2800. That's less than zero, so we've got a minus sign. All right, so as you look at the sign chart, what do you see? Okay, the sign chart is telling us that we're increasing to the left of 100, decreasing to the right. Notice that confirms that we do indeed have a maximum at 600. Okay, so all that's really left here then is to state our answer to the question, how do we build this field to get the maximum area? We're interested in the dimensions, and we are ready to write those down. Hmm. All right, and our sign chart confirms that x equals 600 is one of the dimensions. Um, what about y? Okay, our field had a, a, a length as well as a width. How do we figure out what y is? Okay, well here, it's helpful to go back way to the top of the problem here with our given information. y is equal to 2400 minus 2x. So we can use that to figure out what y is. We're going to get 2400 minus 2 times the x that we just calculated, 600. If we do the arithmetic there, let's see, that's going to be 2400 minus 1200, which gives us 1200. Huh. 
Okay, we could ask ourselves, what are the units on these numbers that we calculated? Well, x and y are both distances, so those units should be feet. Okay, and those two things that we just calculated are actually our answers. Those are the dimensions of the field. Okay, now, technically, they didn't ask us to do this in the problem, but we could go one step further and maybe ask the question, what is the maximum area of the field? Okay, we're in a position where we can figure that out as well. Okay, so let's just add that step here. We have a formula for area that looked like x times y, and we know what x and y are, so let's fill those in. 600 times 1,200, and if we do the algebra there, that's going to give us a pretty big number of, let's see, 720,000, I believe. What would the units on that number be that we just got? Okay, how do we measure area? Well, if x and y are in feet, this must be in square feet. Okay, so there's the maximum area of our field.